know that Jesus helped his friend come out? We don't make it rain on strippers. God broke the law for love. We only reverence one stripper. In many ways, you know, but many paths to what you call God. That and her crazy. path might be something else. And when she gets there, she might call it the light. No one way to paradise. So I'm pretty sure, man, that to get to heaven, there's got to be more than one route. The Pope, who is a very controversial figure, together with the Grand Imam of Al Azhar, wow. signed a declaration to form an interfaith council called the Higher Committee of Human Fraternity and purpose to build the Abrahamic family containing a church, a mosque, and a synagogue, all in a bid to increase the levels of tolerance and acceptance among all men that all religions are equal. But what if I told you that there was a plan, one that actually laid out a logical process of how to remove Christianity from society, and that it has been on the works for nearly a century. Yes, the, most of the previous attempts are to simply kill, burn, you know, destroy Christianity. But this one is life. This one is going inside, like to the roots, and trying to uproot it using the next generation. That is messed up. And while this is happening, Papa's doctrine of, of identity expression and Papa's sexuality is sitting into curriculums all over the planet. There is no limit on the number of times a person can masturbate each day. Do it as much as you want. Apparently, she said, communication between parent and child should be broken. If sex is free, then make abortion legal and make it easy. What? She's presenting abortion, killing of an unborn child as an alternative to contraception. In her reason, human lives are being literally sacrificed to relieve, to alleviate human beings from the responsibility that comes with being sexually degenerate from being sexually perverse. Now, remember this is in the 1940s, where abortion was literally in the hundreds out of the millions of births, say, in the US. By 1973, when abortion was ruled to be a right in the US, the number of babies being massacred per year was 700,000. I know this is a mix of both legitimate abortions where people need abortion services and people, where people are voting out of convenience, which I'm very much against. But regardless, this is a very huge jump. You can walk into a hospital, kill a baby, because that's the reality of what it is, and get out. No accountability, no repercussions whatsoever. Nowadays, there's literally, literally no risk in having physical sex. Wait, is that spiritual sex? I don't know. But, but there's no risk in having physical sex. And it's not in the US alone. For example, here in Kenya, in March 2022, there was a ruling by the High Court in Malindi that abortion care should be given as a right. Now, that case was very great. There was a minor involved and a lot of things. And maybe abortion care was necessary at that point. But there are many people who are using that court case to advocate for abortion out of, out of convenience, which isn't right at all. Now, about divorce, she had a, she had a very weird view. And I'm not going to read it out loud because she's basically comparing love to the menstrual cycle of a woman. Yeah, very weird. But basically she was saying that if you love somebody, you should get them at whatever cost. Even if it means getting them out of an operational, fully functioning marriage. Talk about being selfish. And oh, if you don't love them anymore, if the love dies, uh, you should get out. There's no point in you staying in that relationship. You can dub the person at your own convenience. This is marriage, not relationship. This is marriage you're talking about. Well, isn't that disgustingly common nowadays? Where we have people literally getting yanked out of marriages within months of knowing another partner, getting married to that partner, only for them to divorce a few days later because the love has, has died. The reason why I hate these sentiments is because it's an insult to people who have legitimate reasons for getting a divorce. People who are being abused in their marriages. People whose partners are infidels in their marriages. These are biblical reasons to get a divorce and this, this is just a straight out insult on them. But is there evidence of divorce getting more popular over time? Yes, there most definitely is pretty much. And not only that, Marriage is getting less popular. As a matter of fact, people are now divorcing twice as much and marrying up half as much compared to, say, the 1960s. And while this has many factors to put into consideration, not because some woman wrote it somewhere, the result is sadly very, very similar. Because now the value of marriage has decreased over time. It's so sad that nowadays, a prenup agreement 
is absolutely necessary before you get married. A prenup is basically an agreement that takes care of how things will be settled in case of death or a divorce. But we all know it's, it's about divorce. It's, it's mostly divorce. And now so many people are entering marriage with one foot behind, expecting a divorce. And with each consequent generation, the youth are getting more alien to the concept of a lifelong marriage. And this will result to more sexual partners, more broken relationships, and probably more broken homes and more broken children who will unfortunately pass the same cycle to the next generation. Now on homosexuality, she said, enjoying sexual intercourse is the highest pleasure in humanity. No one must be denied or restricted in how to enjoy themselves. People should be allowed to express sex however they want. Whether it is homosexuality, incest, I'm not kidding. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? Or bestiality, as long as the two agree. What? What the? Now, first of all, I I don't know how a beast would, I I don't know how a beast would consent. But that aside, at this point, homosexuality has been glamorized, especially in the U.S. when it became legal in 2003, and when it became marriage worthy in 2015. And since then, there's been pressure from the West for every other country in the globe to implement these changes. And I mean, it's everywhere. It was in Qatar previous World Cup in Africa, mainly Africa. As a matter of fact, in Kenya, our pre two of our presidents have been forced to engage in such discussions whenever they've been interviewed by the Western media. Now, please note that this is being presented as an alternative lifestyle. And yet, there are many people proficient in the medical field who are saying that homosexuality is a trait. It's a genetic thing. No, I have people I know that are homosexual and I'm 90% sure that they were heterosexual to a certain point. And you see, the funny thing is that I wouldn't entirely blame it on them. Some of them have a really bad sexual and mental history as far as their childhood is concerned. And it all roots back to ruining the family structure. And when you do that and present homosexuality as an alternative, oh yeah, they'll definitely take it. And as if that's not enough, they are bashed by the same group that is supposed to be concerned and take care of them. I'm talking about Christians, of course. Personally, I view homosexuality as a sin like any other. And I'm not saying this to excuse people sinning, no, no. But the contrast with which people treat sins like porn or masturbation or uh, alcoholism or even theft, and you compare to what queer people get, uh, um, I don't see the love of Christ in that. No wonder they run to the devil that quick. It's one thing to tell a person who is in homosexuality that he or she has sinned and that he or she needs Christ and that he or she can change, or should change, but to completely bash them and exile them from the church, that's a completely different thing. Back to the plan. So when they present all these perversions as alternatives, they demolish the law that establishes sex between a married man and a woman. They corrupt what God made holy, and they endorse an immoral, do what thou wilt type of society. And this destabilizes culture. Which leads me to the fourth step, corrupting culture. As I said, this step has two points. Point number seven, debasing art. And point number eight, using media to promote and change mindset. Now, in her books, Alice Bailey said that the arts are one of the primary keys to changing culture. And the greatest way to change human attitude is through media. Now, you may not know this, but before anything is brought mainstream and, and put into law, it is first of all presented to us through the media, and through the arts and through the visuals, either subliminally or not. From child shows to music lyrics and videos to movies whose sole purpose is to corrupt your imagination because art is the language of the spirit. And that which is inside can be brought out through all these platforms. Just look at the current style of the said media that I've just mentioned and contrast it to how things were back in the day. And from here, it now slowly gets into mainstream. And anyone with a watchful eye has seen that for the last few years, global media has been filled with very liberal, pro-choice, anti-Christian sentiments. And anyone with a different opinion is quickly shut down. Celebrities openly mock God. A lot of people come up here and they thank Jesus for this award. I want you to know that no one had less to do with this award than Jesus. And it's now being considered funny, even for programs that are supposed to be family. All right, so the album is called uh, Holy F. Holy no, it's called Holy Okay, all right, all right, well, that, 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 let me... Oh, you get that? Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> You're a role model. 
so much money is being openly pumped into media to promote violence and what I would consider pornographic material and things of the like. You're more likely to see sex outside marriage in media, in movies, everywhere, 80 to 90 times more than sex in marriage. Promiscuity is being promoted as something natural. And we can now, for example, watch gay sex on live TV. The same live TV that kids around us think. Our minds are being neutralized from being sensitive to these things. We now accept them as not. It's still your choice whether you do all these things or not. I mean, it doesn't seem like this is a direct attack to any Christian or to any... This is just overall moral degradation. Because we still have places where we can learn Christian values. They have attacked the family. That was a wonderful place. But they haven't attacked the church. Not in all these points. We still have the church. Right? Right? Well, let's go to the next step. The next step is obviously corrupting the only thing that Christians have left. The church. And this is done in the last two points of this plan. Point 9. Creating an interfaith movement. And point 10. Getting governments to make all these points law. All the points. From number 1 all the way to number 9 and getting the church to endorse these changes. Apparently, Ali said, promote other faiths to be at par with Christianity and break this thing about Christianity as being the only way to heaven. By that, Christianity will be pulled down and other faiths promoted. Diluting of religion. As a matter of fact, you go check in the website of Lucius Trust and you will see that there's active promotion of every other messianic figure in all religions. If I read it, they quote Jesus to the Kalki Avatar, the Bodhisattva, Lord Maitreya, the Imam Mahdi. Basically, as I said, every messianic figure in every other religion and very popular celebrities are seriously propagating that Christ is in the only way to heaven. If you've listened to Oprah Winfrey. How do you please God? And many ways, no, but many paths to what you call God. That and her crazy. path might be something else. And when she gets there, she might call it the light. Or Steve Harvey. One, one way to heaven, no one way to paradise. It's like television. Now it's over 800 channels of cable and they're all pretty entertaining. So I'm pretty sure, man, that to get to heaven, there's got to be more than one route. And as if that's not enough, the Pope, who is a very controversial figure, together with the Grand Imam of Al-Azhar, wow, signed a declaration to form an interfaith council called the Higher Committee of Human Fraternity and purpose to build the Abrahamic family containing a church, a mosque, and a synagogue, all in a bid to increase the levels of tolerance and acceptance among all men that all religions are equal. Your Pope is not mine, no. no. Your Pope agrees with other religious figures that Christianity is equal. To them. That it's not, it's, Christianity is not the only way to heaven. They signed this agreement. My friends, these are all groundworks being laid to usher in the new world religion. It's not as far-fetched as you think. This is actually happening. And this will be a religion embedded in humanism promoting man above God, making you the center of what is spiritual, of, of everything, basically. Can I tell you just how many preachers are deviating almost entirely from the Bible and going onto these humanistic philosophies? Countless. We don't make it rain on booty cheek. You know that Jesus helped his friend come out? We don't make it rain on strippers. God broke the law for love. We only reverence one stripper, and that's the one that took off glory to put on humanity. God has asked me for my opinion. I said, well, Lord, since you asked, I don't think you ought to do that. You see, the reason why I made this video is not because I believe that Christianity is coming to an end. This entire thing, this entire 10-point plan could be a conspiracy for all I care, but it's evident that things are happening and that Christianity is being uprooted from society and we have to take our stand and not be lazy when the enemy is not sleeping to make sure that the salvation of mankind is reduced to the absolute minimum. If this video has been educative in any way, remember to share and like the video. It goes a long way in helping me making more videos like this. And also remember to subscribe. Otherwise, that's it from me. My name is Rokin Mwanda and this is The King Christian and I'll see you on the next one.